Hi guys and welcome back to another video. A lot of you guys have asked me to make videos about good part-time jobs for students. So today in this video, I want to share with you my experience of working as a salesperson at a furniture store. To be exact, at that time, I was not a student yet, but I was on an open work permit. But the reason that I'm sharing this is because I think in general, it is the kind of job that is very suitable for students. I know that students usually have very very limited amounts of time and in this job if you do it right you can earn more than the minimum wage in a short time so let's get to all of that in this video I will talk about how much you can earn working as a salesperson in a furniture store the perks of working in a furniture store what a day working in that job looks like and what experience you might need and so on so let's get straight into it so first of all how much can you earn Back then, a few years ago, the minimum wage was $14 per hour. So at that time, I got paid $14 per hour. But nowadays in Ontario, the minimum wage has been raised to $15.50. So you can expect to get paid at least that amount of money. And I will talk about the commission part later. So let's just do a very quick and easy simulation. So let's just say that you work eight hours per day at $15.50 per hour. So per day, you would be earning $124. If you work 22 days per month, that would bring you to $2,228 before tax. So how much is that after tax? You might be wondering if you're not in Canada yet. That depends on a lot of things, among others, your tax brackets and so on. For this example, I will just apply flat 25%. Just keep in mind that this will likely not be the exact tax rate that will apply to you, but it is good enough to be used for a rough estimation. So let's say that from that amount, 25% uh, will be deducted for taxes and so on, and that would leave you with $2,046. By the way, guys, I don't know what the current regulations for international students working here in Canada is, but regardless of that, let's just assume because you're very busy as a student, working on your assignments, preparing for your exams, all you have left is 20 hours per week. And even that sometimes can really be a stretch. So let's just assume that you work half the hours. So for example, instead of eight hours per day for 22 days, you just work for four hours per day or you work for eight hours per day, but only on 11 days. And in that case, you would earn $1,364. And if we just apply that flat tax rate of 25% in this example, you would be left with $1,023, which is not too bad, but you can earn this exact same amount at any other place. So why would you consider working at a furniture store. The awesome thing, what I really liked about working at the furniture store was that I was allowed to earn commissions, sales commissions to be exact. In case you've never been paid commissions before, this is roughly how it works. So let's just say that you sell this awesome sofa set to a customer which costs $6,000 and the commission that applies is 3%. That means that on top of your basic pay, you would be paid 3% times $6,000 equals $180. And if the furniture is a popular store and if you're a very, very good salesperson, then there's no reason why you can't make such a sale every day or every other day. So let's just say that you made 10 of such sales every month, or let's just even say five. That means that in a month, you would get paid an additional $900 in commission, which is really not bad because keep in mind that you're working the exact number of hours, the same number of hours that you would spend otherwise working in the computer lab at the library in a fast food restaurant and so on so you spend the exact amount of time but because of your sales skills you can earn 50% or even sometimes 100% more so that was something that really motivated me and that I really enjoyed so I got my pay stub and I saw that in addition to my uh, minimum wage of $14 at the time I got an additional $200 or $300 in commission which was just awesome by the way guys if you found this video useful so far and you want me to continue making these kinds of video where I talk about how it's like working in Canada, then please do let me know by hitting the like button and also leave me your questions in the comments below. Please let me know what else you're curious to know about. Thank you. And there's also another perk of working at a furniture store, especially for those of you who are new here in Canada and who are in the process of setting up your house or apartment, which is that usually you as an employee would get a special discount when you purchase the furniture and the home assessment 
accessories in the furniture store. So at the store which I worked at, at that time, I was eligible to get discounts anywhere between 20 to 50% depending on the items. So that was also awesome. And at this point, you might be asking me, so what furniture store was it exactly? It was a local small chain furniture store, but I don't want to mention the name because my experience working at that particular furniture store wasn't exactly the best. Let's just keep it at that. Now let's talk about what a day working as a salesperson at a furniture store is like. And sorry that I don't have any footage for that. For some reason at the time, I just didn't take any videos. So it really depends on what kind of furniture store you're working at, of course. If you're working at a furniture store like Ikea, for example, then it's likely to be very, very busy and you have a very packed schedule. But the furniture store I worked at was at a very, very quiet mall and it was not much happening there. So there were times where it was just plain boring, I might say. I mean, you might think that it's nice to have a job where you have nothing to do, where you have a lot of time and you can look at your phone all day. But that wasn't the case for me. I just, I just hated the feeling of just sitting around and having to try to look for things to do. But anyway, so I would come into the store. It opens at 10, so I would come in like at a quarter to 10 and then open the till. We'll look at last day's furniture orders and start processing them. So what that means is that if a customer came in the last day and bought, let's say a table, for example, or a lamp, then I as a salesperson was also in charge of getting it packed ready for delivery. So I would pack it nicely to ensure that it wouldn't break. And then I would call the delivery company that worked with us and I would get that shipped to the customer. And since it was a small furniture store, usually it would only be manned by one to two people at the same time at the most. So we as the salespeople would also be in charge of cleaning the premises, which means sweeping and like dusting lamps and so on and just making sure that everything is in order. And we were also in charge of arranging the furniture so that when new pieces came in, we would have to arrange it in a way that everything would look nice and also find new ways of displaying new items like home accessories so they would look appealing to the customer so that was something that was quite fun to do and then like i said before there would sometimes be one to two hours where there was just nothing going on there was no customer coming in but then sometimes in the afternoon when we were about to close all at once five six seven ten customers would all come in at the same time and then there was only me or me and another colleague and we had to attend to them and that would be quite hectic and then you know customers would have questions like does this table or this bench come in a larger size does it come in another color how much does it cost etc and that is where we would need to look up in the main catalog if there were other options or not because there were so many items that we ourselves were not familiar with the whole product sortiment and then on good days like i told you before a customer would decide to buy that huge sofa set for six thousand dollars or more and then we would arrange the payment whether they would like to do a down payment first or do the full payment and arrange the delivery day date and hour and so on and now let's talk about the kind of experience that you need. So do you need to be experienced in the furniture business or even as a salesperson? And the answer is not necessarily, especially in this kind of economy. Everywhere stores, businesses are looking for people to work for them. And oftentimes, especially for these kinds of jobs that don't require that much skill. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course you need skill, but you do not need a PhD to do that. They are pretty lenient about the kind of experience. And what I noticed is that one of the most important things that you have to bring to the job is your personality and your character. You have to actually show in this kind of customer oriented business that you are customer oriented, that you listen, that you pay attention and so on. And of course, you need to have those basic math skills to figure out the discounts, measurements and so on. Of course, I could imagine some stores that really want their salespeople to be highly experienced, but I'm pretty sure that you will find a lot of furniture stores where they would just take you directly on board and train you on the job. So at that time, when I took the job, I didn't really have experience working as a salesperson because my background at that time was in banking and in filmmaking. And when I was working in banking, I was actually working in the back office. So I didn't have much experience working at the front line. It was really something new to me, but I really, really learned a lot in the process. And it was really an interesting experience, even if you just do it for a very short time to have the experience working as a salesperson. And if you are really keen on getting those commissions and making those sales, one thing that I learned is that 
something really really important is to really pay attention to the customer because sometimes customers walk in and they know exactly what they want what they don't want but many customers do come in and they look for some kind of validation they are not really sure if that table would fit in their kitchen or not if it would look nice with their uh, granite countertop or whatever and that is where you have to offer your advice you have to help the customer to envision how that particular piece would look in their kitchen if it might fit or not not and you have to be very helpful of course because the customer might go home and think about it and then you might give them a call and follow up with the measurements and see if it fits and oftentimes someone who really doubted whether or not they wanted that particular table changed their mind and came back the following day and made the purchase so for me the job at the furniture store was really just a temporary stint I only worked there for a couple of months but I think if you are new here in Canada if you're on an open work permit or if you're here as a student Student, then it's really something to consider I mean of course it depends on your other options but if your other option for example is working at a factory which is very very exhausting and sometimes it's located far away so it takes a lot of time to get back and forth or work at a fast food restaurant where you usually do not get any tips then I believe that working at a furniture store as a salesperson is a much much better option if you are a good salesperson you can earn more money through the commissions in the same amount of time and as a newcomer here you can also benefit from those employee discounts you get to buy your furniture and set up your new place if you are wondering how you can actually get a job here in Canada, I mean, most people would just go ahead and apply online, which is one way to do it. But there are other more important things that you need to do if you want to get a job fast here in Canada, especially as a newcomer. And I talk about that in this video here. So if you want to know more about how to get a job fast, then do make sure that you check out this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. All the best and I'll see you in the next video.